Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. And I'm Kevin Friel. We'd like to remind you right at the top that the meetings we cover are available on demand at the town's website. You can log on at www.town.barnstable.ma.us. Plans are underway to refurbish the exterior envelope of the town hall building. Last fall, the town council appropriated just over $3 million for the repairs and approved additional $1.7 million coming from Community Preservation Act funds. The repairs to town hall will include replacement of the roof, windows, and repointing of the brickwork. On Monday night, Alicia Stanley presented the Community Preservation Committee with the timeline for the project. Some information about the town hall exterior. Um, Chair Council and the DPW have set up bi-weekly meetings. So what we do is we go in and we just discuss the project status. Um, the bids, I have a few dates to throw out there if anybody's interested in. The sub-bids are due on May 5th. Um, this is all for the public. public can go in and, and be a part of this as well, if anyone has interest, maybe Marilyn. May 19th, the general bids are due. May 26th, they're anticipating the um, contract award. June 2nd through June 10th, they're going to prepare the contract. And they're anticipating a start date of June 11th. We now turn to last night's school committee meeting. Committee members dealt with two agenda items, both of which are good news for the district. First, Superintendent Dr. Patricia Grenier announced that a lease for the former Osterville Elementary School building is all but a done deal. We have agreed in theory and, and hopefully in May in legally and in practice to lease Osterville Elementary School to the Cape Cod Collaborative. Uh, they will be bringing over three distinct programs, um, roughly 40 students, and we have worked with them with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to craft an agreement on inclusion. Um, for students, our students will, some of our students will go to the facility there, um, particularly our high school students and community service, and other uh, arrangements will be made for students from the collaborative program to either attend as appropriate special programs at Centerville Elementary or West Villages Elementary, and each year, depending on the population of student, we will customize the kinds of integration that will occur. Um, the collaborative will sort of sublease with a group called the Challenger Club, and it's a group um, designed specifically to support uh, students with special needs in a more of a recreational kind of philosophy, and the partnership is really quite beautiful. The Challenger Club wanted um, to lease a, a building from us. Initially, they were expressed interest, but they formed, um, no pun intended, a collaboration with the collaborative. Um, and it, it just is a perfect fit. Later, the two tenants who will occupy the school had a chance to give the public a little background on their organizations. Here's Cape Cod Collaborative Executive Director Paul Hilton. He's followed by Cape Cod Challenger Club co-founder Kelvin Eng. The Cape Cod Collaborative is um, actually a municipal organization. We're part of the 20 school systems that uh, are, constitute the Cape Cod Collaborative, including Barnstable. So we're essentially legally part of your school system, and we offer programs that strengthen and support uh, the public school systems in the region. Uh, we run uh, professional development programs, we run advanced studies programs, and we run special education programs, and at times we do transportation. Um, the opportunity to come in, uh, to the Osterville Elementary School allows us to uh, provide a better regional solution for the students that have significant needs in, in the Cape region. Uh, Anita Woods has been with the collaborative 10 years. Uh, myself, I've only been in this collaborative for a year, and it's been a fantastic year. Uh, and this is the culmination of a lot of opportunities to uh, not only regionalize uh, resources for ourselves, but also to partner with an organization such as the Cape Cod Challenger Club, uh, which does the recreational and social activities for students outside of the school day. So this is a very exciting opportunity, not, not only for us that work in a collaborative and work with these students, but for the students and the families themselves. Hello, my name is Kelvin Eng, and this is my wife, Amy Lepkind. Four years ago, we started a small group of special needs children playing Little League Baseball in Sandwich. And today it's grown to over 243 children throughout Cape Cod. We turned what was a um, six-week baseball program into a year-round 
recreational and social activity program for um, special needs children and young adults. And we now do soccer in Sandwich on, uh, in the fall. We have a baseball program that starts actually this Sunday at Johnny Kelly Field where we have six full teams and over 80 kids signed up. Um, and we run martial arts, bowling, uh, music programs, art programs. The problem that we've had since we've grown so large is we have no facility. So the collaboration with the collaborative has been the best of both worlds. Our organization is 100% volunteer run. Everybody on the, everybody who operates the programs, all of the money which is taken in is through fundraising and grants and uh, all of the money goes right back into our programs. We have no paid staff. And if anyone wants to get involved and volunteer or send you some money, how would they do that? <laughs> you can always visit our website. There you go. <laughs> we have a website that's capecodchallenger.org. The school committee voted to approve a memorandum of understanding to allow the collaborative and the challenger club to occupy the building until June 30th while the lease agreement is finalized. Dr. Grenier said that it should be ready sometime in May. After that, the committee heard a brief presentation from Chief Procurement Officer David Anthony and Dr. Grenier regarding the bid process to replace the heating system at the Barnstable Community Horace Mann Charter Public School received four bona fide sub bids for the electrical trade. We received four general contractor bids and the um, low bid, and I'll let superintendent give you the good news, uh, the low bid came in under projections. So this, is, um, this was a good process. It came in under where we thought it was going to be and we're very happy with the results. Great. Great. And the recommendation is to move forward on this bid? The recommendation would be that the committee approve um, an acceptance of bid by Enterprise Equipment Company um, for $977,422. Uh, I will tell the committee um, that RDK reviewed all of the bids when they came in, and he, um, De Dennis has worked with RDK. I, we has worked with Enterprise Equipment in the past on a number of jobs, and quite frankly, they were very pleased that they were the low bidder. Um, as he, he said um, in our review meeting, that we really won on this one. Good. Um, good, good this good. bid price also will allow us in the, over the course of the next year or two to address um, there, mem remember there was a small, there was an asbestos issue that we had put off in containment. We could close the door and could put it off until DEP recognized it. Um, the fact that this bid is the price that it is will allow us to take steps to move forward on that um, and still um, return money to the sale of the grade five building yep, for uh, use for our other facilities great, project. Great, great, so great. it is a win, win, win on this. Excellent. As you just heard, the bid, which the school committee unanimously accepted, was a bargain for the district. It came in over $300,000 lower than the amount the town council appropriated for the fix earlier this year. Now let's take a look at this week's remaining meetings. On Wednesday, April 28th at 6 p.m., the amnesty hearings meet in the town hall hearing room. At 7 o'clock, the Zoning Board of Appeals meets in the town hall hearing room. Well, that's all the time we have here on Barnstable today, but be sure to tune in to Barnstable this morning, tomorrow at 7.30 a.m., where we'll have plenty of reaction from town officials on today's decision by U.S. Interior Secretary Ken Salazar to approve the Cape Wind Project. We'll also feature more reaction on tomorrow evening's edition of Barnstable Today. For Kevin Friel, I'm Nick Cortese. We'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.